ideas come through. When the revolution starts in 1910, we find that there are places all over Mexico where women are saying, this is our chance. But there's something else that was going on. There was a strong movement in Mexico, as in the United States, as in Argentina, Brazil, Spain, France. Spiritism. You've all heard of spiritism. Historians <coughs> tend to ignore it. The first woman who ran for president of the United States, Victoria Howe, was a spiritist. <coughs> Madero was a spiritist. And Yas Calles, another leader of the revolution and president of Mexico, was a spiritist. What was spiritism? Well, Abelardo Villegas, a Mexican philosopher, says it's the uneducated person's positivism. <laughs> that is to say, let's have a superior being, a divine power, but let's have it without priests, let's have it without clergy, let's have it scientific, but something that we can believe in. And Mexico, since the 1870s, going through all these tremendous changes, people losing their land in the rural areas, moving into cities, working in factories, great changes taking place, had to find something to hold on to. And the church, which was omnipotent in Mexico in the 19th century, although the liberals were trying to throw it out, they still had a strong, a, a very firm hold over the people's consciousness. And so we find a number of women, particularly, looking at spiritism as a way where they could move away from the church but continue to have a spiritual life. And in spiritism, there was equality. There is equality for all. There are no hierarchies, men or women, priests or not priests. The most famous one that we know of in times of the revolution was Teresa de Urea, La Santa de Cabo. This magnificent young woman who was a healer, not far from here, south, in northern Sinaloa, southern Sonora, who ended up being so, so well known for her miraculous healings that people from all over Mexico, all over the Sierras, would go to Cabora, where her father had a ranch. And I won't tell the story because it's long and complicated and I don't have time, but you may want to those of you who don't know about her to look for the book named Teresita by Bolden. Tell the good story. And then Paul Vanderwood, excellent historian, who has done a wonderful book on her as well. But she ended up having to leave Mexico because that she was subverting the government, that she was calling for revolution, when all she did was call for the good life for people. She had to leave, uh, went into exile to, to here, to Nogales, crossed through Tucson, went to El Paso, and ended up living in Clifton. I've had a number of students whose families were healed by this in Clifton. Actually, she lived more time in the United States than she did in Mexico. But this strain of spiritism was very, very strong in the northern part of Mexico, all the way from Jalisco up the coast and into Chihuahua, and up the coast of Los Angeles and up in San Francisco. For example, in 1906, the Los Angeles Directory has 123 Temples of Spiritism in its uh, telephone book, <laughs> in the city directory, excuse me. So that gives you an idea how widespread <coughs> this was. So here we have working class women on one hand, and we have more educated women on the other, all looking for a better life and looking for how to change, how to change Mexico. And then it seems that if in 1930, 1920, when all of this violence is coming to an end and we have the institutionalization of some of the revolutions, that women disappear. Those women who had been fighting the soldaderas, they all went home maybe. Well, 
they didn't disappear enough because the government the revolutionary government first, and then later the institutionalized government, had a list of 600 women who had served in the revolution and therefore were awarded a pension. Most of these were women who were coronelas, sargentos, they were women warriors, not the Juanas, who had been there to help the men with their domestic needs. And one of the last, I think the last one to die who received a pension all those years was a woman in Aguaprieta, Sonora, by the name of Petra Herrera. She died in, I believe, 1988, at the age of almost 100. And she collected her pension since the 1920s for her participation in the revolution. So we do see that there was some institutionalized recognition of that work. But where was the equality? And historians looked and said, what happened to all these women that called for equality and nothing happened? Why didn't it happen? Well, the same thing can be said for other goals of the Mexican Revolution. But it didn't, it didn't just end. What ended, or what has happened, was that historians hadn't looked. This is the wonderful thing that happens for the history of the Mexican Revolution when historians in the 1960s began to wake up to looking at history in a newer way. The movement of liberation that opened the door to looking at the, his, at the voices of all people, so to speak. Not just social groups that had already been included, but looking for the voices of all. And here, we find an interesting thing if you look at the historiography. The women's movement, which becomes a part of this demand for the women's voice to be included in the official narrative, not only in Mexico, but in all places. We have a group of Chicana historians in the 1970s. Chicanas, and I use that word in all its political meaning, these were young women who were training as historians because they wanted to make sure that the voice of the women of Mexican descent in this country would be put in to the historical narrative of the history of the United States. And it, even here at this university, in the 1970s, it was considered that Chicano history was not something which could exist because it was said there was no body of knowledge for that. But the pioneers came forth. We have the work of Juan Gomez Quinones from UCLA, for example, who turned to look at the organizing of, of the uh, Partido Liberal Mexicano in the United States. Mexicans who came here during the Porfiriato to try to organize a revolution in Mexico. And with them came the ideas of equality for women. The women who they worked with, Sara Ramirez, the two Villarreal sisters from San Antonio, and women who came from Mexico, like Juana Gutierrez, they all believed in equality. And they fought for it here in the Southwest as they prepared to go back to Mexico and bring about revolution. 